Welcome to my kitchen. I am absolutely thrilled to have you here. My name is Aria Kagan. I am a private chef. I'm a certified health coach and a super proud member of Salt Health. And we're gonna cook today. So let's start with the peppers and the onions. And I wanna show you first how I set up my station. Um, when I cook, I always make sure that I'm cooking here and I'm not leaving to throw things away and walking. I focus on efficiency. I have three kids, I work, and anything that I can do to make my life more efficient, I will definitely pass on to you because I think that cooking is fun and it's exciting. It sometimes is a little time consuming. And so I'm gonna teach you as we move along through these videos, great time-saving tips. I hope that I can inspire you to get into your kitchen and cook. And um, so let's let's start with my station setup because that's, that's key to success. I always have a bowl near me. Usually it's in front of me or to the side of me. And this is what I'm gonna, where I'm gonna put all my food scraps. Now, if you have a compost bin, this is great. You can just dump that right into your compost bin, but I always make sure that there's a bowl near me so I'm not running back and forth to the garbage. So, peppers. Peppers are delicious. I have a, a yellow pepper, or I'm sorry, an, I have an orange pepper, an orange pepper and a red pepper, and we're just gonna cut those up. I like to use a chef's knife. Another great knife is a paring knife. This is a paring knife. This is a chef's knife. It's a little bigger. Um, you can use either one. I'll show you how to use both. But right now we're just gonna cut up this pepper. And the first thing I wanna do, I'll show you two different ways. The first way is just slicing right down. Now, the pepper has seeds on the inside. And I know whenever I cut a pepper, it's like the seeds go everywhere. So instead of cutting the pepper and having the seeds go everywhere, I'm gonna teach you, well, the first, the first method I'll teach you is just a, a very simple cut down. And as I cut, I'm gonna leave my seeds intact. Now, I'm gonna turn the pepper flat and we're just gonna cut around those seeds. Don't forget the bottom. This piece will now go into my little garbage bin and I'm not leaving. So there's one pepper already chopped up. If there's a few extra seeds, you can just pull them out with your fingers or use your paring knife. So this recipe calls for two peppers. I'm gonna cut them up today. The other way to cut a pepper is by laying it flat like this and cutting into the pepper like this. And then as you go through, I'm gonna roll the pepper away from my knife. And as I roll it away from my knife, the, the flesh stays intact. And then I have a full pepper extravaganza. Little slices the long way. I just am taking my paring knife, which is, um, which works out really nice and, and evenly. And you see the pepper's about that size. Easy enough. And I think it's, I think a paring knife works out really, really nicely when you're cutting peppers. I like to cut the pepper skin side up. I'm gonna put those aside here. And then here's my other pepper. There we go. Peppers are cut. Now it's time to move on to the onion. So, onion round can be a little dangerous to um, to cut. So I'm gonna, again, give you a little, couple little tips and tricks. You have this end here, which is the, the root end. That's what goes into the ground. And then this is the stem end, which sticks up. So what I like to do, and again, I really enjoy using a paring knife. I think it's quick and it's easy. Um, you're welcome to use a chef's knife too, and I'll show you in a little bit how to use that. But basically we're just cutting down 
And again, I'm holding this really firm. If you find that your onion or whatever you're cutting is a little on the rolly side, then what you can do is you can just cut a little piece of that onion right here so it's flat. So when you go to cut it, it doesn't move. And so I'm gonna cut off that stem end. And again, it's not moving because I cut a little piece of the onion off and now I have a very sturdy surface. That's a, that's the key to making sure that you don't cut yourself. Always having a very sturdy surface. So I'm just gonna peel the onion. I'll bring my garbage bowl here in front of me. And again, you can take your paring knife. I would say if I can't do it with a paring knife, I don't wanna do it. That's how, that's my, my, my kitchen rules because I think most of cooking can be done really and simply and easily, especially when you start with really good ingredients. You win half your battle at that point. Okay, so onion is chopped. And again, I can either use my paring knife, but I'm gonna switch um, over to my chef's knife so I can show you how this is used, just like this. All right, and I'm going to, again, a flat surface and I'm cutting through, I'm using the point of my knife and I'm slicing through the onion. And then I'm letting the, the knife do the work, the rocking. And I'm slicing, slicing, slicing. This is called sliced onion. And I'll show you. The onion pieces look like this. They're like that thick. And they're gonna saute up really, really nicely. And the key to anything, especially when you're cooking up peppers and onions or you have a couple different vegetables, the key is to make sure that your sizes are similar so everything cooks evenly, okay? So we're chopping these up. I'm gonna put that aside. Again, everything is, I'm putting in its place. And then I'll show you how to use a paring knife to cut an onion and this, you're just slicing through. And again, I have the onion on the flat surface so it doesn't roll around. And I'm just slicing through the onion, one, two, three. Once I get to this point and I feel like it's a little wobbly, I just fold it down just like that. And one, two, three. And so we have our peppers cut up, a red and an orange pepper. We have an onion sliced up, ready to go. We're gonna head over to the stove and saute up the onions and the peppers and add a little bit of salt and a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of pepper. And if you like it spicy, you can add some chili flakes. But let's head over there and out and we'll start sauteing. All right, so. So now we're gonna start sauteing up the peppers and onions. We're gonna start with a little avocado oil, and this is about two tablespoons that I'm gonna to add to my pan. My pan is hot, so add the avocado oil, and I'm gonna add my pepper, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna add the avocado oil, and now the onions. And I'm gonna start by sauteing up my onions. I like to do this because the onions cook a little slower than the peppers, number one. And number two, what happens is if I add my peppers with the onions, the peppers are so full of water, they're gonna end up um, releasing a lot of their water and we're gonna end up kind of steaming um, our onions and our peppers versus sauteing them. And the one delicious thing when you get to saute is that you end up caramelizing. So you get that little brown, um, you see that little brownness on your onions or on your peppers, that's called caramelization, which in my book is called flavor. So we definitely wanna add um, some caramelization that we only get by sauteing. So our onions are in, I'm just gonna move them around just a bit as they saute, there's gonna be this really beautiful caramelization that occurs. And so by letting them sit here for a little bit and just get nice and toasty golden, you're gonna add so much more flavor. And a lot of times that's the big 
you know, downfall when people say, oh my gosh, now I have to eat healthy. What am I gonna eat? Healthy food doesn't always taste good. And I'll tell you, by doing this, by just caramelizing your vegetables a little bit in a good fat, so we're using avocado oil, you can also use grapeseed oil, coconut oil, these are all great um, oils to saute in because they, they do well in high heat without breaking down into um, something that's not so healthy. So olive oil, for instance, you don't really wanna saute in unless you're sauteing at a very low temperature. Olive oil is much better used for um, salad dressings and to drizzle as a, as a topping on, on something. Okay, onions, we can now move them around a little bit. I have my heat on like a medium, medium high. Actually, I'm gonna turn it up just a touch. And again, you need a higher heat. So again, my favorite word, caramelization. You get that caramelization. And the nice thing about this recipe is that we're gonna use one saute pan. We're gonna saute up the onions and the peppers. And once those are nicely sauteed, we'll put that onto a dish and then we'll add in um, our bison meat. So you don't need to use two, two dishes. about four or five minutes and then we'll add the peppers after that but again you want to get that nice golden caramely look again it's it's flavor there for you to enjoy you'll see that I'm not adding salt or pepper yet the reason being the salt will pull out liquid and again if there's liquid, that means that you're not sauteing anymore and you're steaming, and we don't wanna, we don't wanna steam these vegetables. The other reason I'm adding salt or pepper is because at this point, because I'm using a higher heat, the pepper has a tendency to burn and get bitter, and so I always like to season things towards the end as a finisher. So at this point, everything is sauteing. I add my peppers. I'm gonna saute those really nicely, and about, maybe a minute before I take the peppers and the onions off, I'll add some salted pepper. But yeah, right there. Oh, that's beautiful. See that? That, my friends, is caramelization. That is amazing flavor. So, okay, these are looking really good. That took, oh, maybe about five minutes. Once I have onions are, are basically done, you can start to hear them like crispling and crackling, which are always a telltale sign that they're, they're ready. Okay, onions are, are nice and caramelized. Now I'm gonna add my peppers. Whenever you're adding vegetables to a hot pan, you always wanna make sure that your hand is close enough so nothing splatters up. Again, not so close that you burn yourself, but close enough so that you can, you can drop your peppers down without burning yourself. And I'm gonna mix those together. That's delicious. My onions are nicely caramelized. The peppers are starting to release some of their liquid. And so then they're becoming a little bit more caramelized. And I give this a mix. And if you love your peppers and onions like really, really soft, you can keep cooking them at this point. I like my peppers just a little, like to have a little bite when I bite into them. So now I'm gonna add some salt, pepper, and a little bit of chili powder. Salt is to your taste. I would say 
I always like to keep my salt in a dish, only because I like to be able to feel it. Um, this is about maybe, that's about maybe two, maybe a te two teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna add a little bit of black brown pepper. And again, I like to keep it in a little dish. So I like to feel it. And then I have a little chili. So I'm gonna add maybe, oh, maybe about a teaspoon of chili. And I'm gonna give that a stir. And that's it, we are done. My peppers are done, my peppers and onions. And I'm just gonna put them on a plate off to the side. It smells so, so good. And it's okay if your pan has a little bit of darkness to it. We're gonna add, so this is fine. We're gonna add, um, Going to turn the flame back on to about like again about a medium, medium high. I'm going to add about another maybe one or two tablespoons of of avocado oil, and then I'm going to add the bison. This is ground bison from Benjamin Lee Farms. It's out in Oklahoma, and you can pick this bison up right at Salt Health. I'm going to put this in the pan. Trying to wash my hands a little bit. So the bison is in. And now, just like any ground beef, bison is, is works the same. It cooks similar. It actually cooks a little faster than other ground beef or ground meat. So I'm just gonna break it up. And again, the same rule of thumb applies to meat as it did to our vegetables. I don't want to season right away because I don't want to run the risk of, um, of browning or burning the spices because we're going to be putting in cumin. Well, actually, let me show you what we're going to be putting in. We're going to be adding cumin. We're going to be adding salt, garlic powder, and some chili. And this is gonna give your bison delicious flavor. So right here we have our bison. It's nicely browned. It's about three quarters of the way cooked. And so now I'm gonna add in my spices, just like that. And oh my goodness. The smell is so good. Cook. Bison has such a sweet flavor. It's not gamey. Loaded with omega-3s. You know, we always think of salmon as having so many omega-3s. Bison also has a lot of omega-3s. So it makes it a really delicious um, addition to your repertoire of a food. Again, you can you can sub out ground turkey or ground beef. This bison though is like delicious. All right, so this has been cooking for a, for a couple minutes. It smells so good. So this is basically done. Our sweet potatoes are done. Our peppers and onions are done. Let's go put this together with a little bit of avocado. So, I have my sweet potatoes. I roasted these 400 for about an hour, and they smell incredible. What I do when I roast um, sweet potatoes is I put a little oil on them, like a grapeseed oil or an avocado oil, and I just sprinkle them with a little bit of salt, and they roast them so delicious. 
So all I'm gonna do is just cut down the center of the sweet potato. I'm also gonna make a little hash there. And I'm gonna squeeze just at the bottom, just to open up the sweet potato just like that. We're gonna put on some of this cumin scented bison, again, full of flavor, full of incredible omega-3s, low in fat, and this bison was raised right over in Oklahoma, super sustainable. Um, you can pick it up at Salt, so next time you're in, just grab a, grab a couple packs. This is gonna go right in the center of my sweet potato, just like that. If it overflows, you know, that's just fine, of course, just like this. I'm gonna add the peppers and the onions right here. Those beautiful caramelized onions, those peppers, which add so much flavor and so much texture. Peppers are great because they're really high in vitamin C. So you're not only eating something delicious, it's also good for you. Double whammy on that one. Okay, here we go. Sweet potato, bison, peppers, onions. Now we're gonna add the avocado right on top, just like that. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I love a little Tomato, so you can add a few little tomatoes if you'd like. Just right on top of that. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Okay, I love spicy, not too spicy, but I do like a little kick. So a couple jalapenos are happy, happily, a couple little jalapenos for a little spice and a cilantro, just like that. Oh my goodness. How delicious does that look? Roasted sweet potato, peppers, caramelized onions, cumin scented bison, avocado, tomato, just topped with a little jalapeno and cilantro. I'm eating this. I hope you do too. Please let me know if you have any questions and I can't wait to see you soon.